Hey everyone, um, um, we're here today to talk about uh, Gateway API and Ingress to Gateway and everything in between from uh, migrating from Ingress to Gateway API. Uh, I'm Lior, uh, I work at Google as a site reliability engineer. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm an, also an Ingress to Gateway maintainer and uh, Gateway API contributor. Yeah, hello everybody, my name is Mattia. Uh, I'm a software engineer working at Kong, and I am a Gateway API maintainer and an Ingress to Gateway maintainer. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Devanj Kumar. I am a computer science and engineering student at NITK Suratkar. And uh, I'm a Google Summer of Code contributor under CNCF, and I've made contributions to Ingress to Gateway. All right. Let me put out the slides real quick. Right, so as we said, we are here today to talk about uh, migrating from Ingress to Gateway API. Uh, we'll also focus on Ingress to Gateway, which is a tool that uh, can facilitate this process. Before we even dive to, to the, to the uh, uh, ins and outs of the presentation and the demo, let's just talk a little bit about Ingress. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Ingress, right? Where Ingress was simply simple and uh, broadly implementable. Um, and it had like um, a very uh, easy path for configuring, uh, uh, you know, rules, how to forward uh, traffic to your service. Um, you could have used DLS configuration, host and path matching, and the list is long. But obviously, uh, Ingress came with its own limitations, uh, which is uh, mainly why we're here today, mainly why uh, Gateway API has started. So um, Ingress lacked a lot of core features. Uh, which led to custom extensions being everywhere. These extensions were usually in the form of annotations, and those annotations usually weren't portable, so you couldn't just switch from one cloud provider to from one provider to another. Um, it had lack of protocol diversity, and additionally, it had insufficient permission model. Now, entering Gateway API, and uh, before we're doing a very brief overview of the API, I want to just lay down a few facts. So Gateway API is a CRD-based API. It means it was developed out of tree, out of Kubernetes, Kubernetes, which basically allows the community to have faster development and shorten the feedback loop. Uh, Gateway API is a persona focus model. So as you can see, different personas have different responsibilities. Um, it is flexible and extensible, and I promise you we're gonna talk a lot about it throughout the presentation. And lastly, it had large community support and I think we now more than 200 uh, active contributors. And let's just do, uh, let's just, you know, let's just walk you through uh, the API real quick. So um, initially we have like gateway class, right? And gateway class is literally um, very identical. It's not identical, but it's nearly identical to ingress class. Um, it basically represents a class of gateways that can be instantiated uh, from the gateway class. Um, as you can see on the left, we have a uh, controller name, which is the main field under the gateway class. It just indicates what controller is responsible for reconciling the gateways uh, created from this gateway class. Um, and this will usually be managed by the infrastructure provider, uh, whether it's a cloud provider like GKE or in cluster provider like Kong or Istio. Then we have gateways. And gateway essentially let us represent our load balancing or proxy configuration as a Kubernetes resource. As you can see at the left, this is an example of a gateway. Things like listener configs, um, allowed routes, um, TLS configuration, um, all comes down under, under gateway. And lastly, uh, we have the routes. And as, as you can see, we have different type of routes supported as well. So routes describe how traffic comes through the gateway maps to our services, to our backends. So things like path matching, weight-based routing um, can come here, and obviously the list is longer. Um, and here's an example again of a simple HTTP route of a login service, uh, basically two versions of a login service. So you can see under the parent ref field, this basically indicates uh, who is the parent of this route. So we are touching this route to the external gateway. Uh, this means that traffic comes through the external gateway uh, needs to uh, understand uh, the route and uh, follow the rules described by the routes. Next, we have the host name and the rules, uh, the first section of the rules fields, which is the match. Uh, so you can see we specify foo.example.com 
uh, is uh, uh, the route is basically responsible for traffic distance to this host. And uh, we, we're listening on all the past prefixes, uh, starting with login. And lastly, we have the backend references that we indicated. We have two versions of the login service. So 90% uh, goes to login v1 and 10% goes to login v2. Now, wait a minute. I'm sure a lot of you are saying, right, this API uh, looks the same as previous APIs. We could have configured everything um, under the, the old API. Um, and uh, But do you remember that basically I said that the gateway API is portable and flexible? So let's take a look at a, like two examples we picked to see how more portable and how more flexible the gateway API and how more how how easier it is to to use it. So first example is if we were to add a host, right? So in the non-gateway API world, in the ingress world, we'll have to duplicate the whole rule uh, just to add another host. There wasn't any other way to just add another host to the same rule. In the gateway API, or specifically in the HP route. Um, uh, resource, you can see we just add a list to the list of host names. Similarly, if we were to change an implementation, if we were to experiment with a new implementation. Um, so on the screen, we see we have uh, Istio virtual service and the corresponding gateway API configuration for the same thing. So um, if uh, we wanted to experiment with a different provider, let's say um, Contour. So uh, we had had to go to Contour and uh, specifically uh, to the con to contour specific resource and try and go and try to map all the Istio virtual service fields uh, to the corresponding fields on the contour HP proxy. Whereas on the gateway API world, we'll just attach a new parent reference uh, to our HP route. Um, and this would be the contour external gateway, which we probably installed as part of our contour installation. And traffic will just flow through the gateway and get to the route. Nothing, we, we, we change nothing in the route uh, the backend still exposed on the same path, same ports, and we just just literally change uh, what gateway redirects traffic to this route. Um, let me just uh, do a demo real quick uh, before we move to the other part, uh, because that's what we're here for, right? Uh, we're here to get uh, our hands dirty a little bit. So let me pull up the demo, um, specifically for these two pieces that I've just uh, uh, talked about. So uh, how do I do that? Uh, uh, and here it is. So, so here it is. Um, I prepared a demo. Um, in this demo, we're gonna uh, show um, basically what we just uh, uh, saw the two examples we saw. So let's start by uh, looking at the cluster and see uh, basically what gateway and gateway class we have. So for this demo, we installed, we pre-installed Estio. Um, and here we have the gateway class and the gateway, uh, which we specifically installed. Um, as you can see, um, the gateway, Estio external gateway is, has a single listener on port 80. And now we're going to go ahead and install the base manifests. Uh, which is just a simple service that uh, basically echoes the request to the screen. Um, let's go ahead and uh, apply it to the cluster real quick. So as you can see, it is unchanged to me because already there, but um, yeah, this is the exact um, uh, base manifest we're going to use. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply an HTTP route. And as you can see, this HTTP route basically attached to the Istio external gateway. Um, and um, it, it's going to listen on the www.foo.com hostname and going to basically uh, map the traffic to the service we just created. Um, let's just apply it real quick to the cluster. So yeah, we just did it. Now um, let me check. Um, I'm going to check that uh, basically the... Um, this is the exact um, the exact configuration or uh, what we expect. So as you can see, uh, we have the uh, foo.com. Uh, we have the parent ref as the external gateway and uh, it is listened on uh, uh, port 3000. Right, 
now let's just test that everything works as expected. So I'm going to grab uh, the Istio gateway host from the uh, gateway address. And uh, then I'm going to just um, uh, send a CRL command um, to foo.com to see that we have connectivity. And as you can see, um, the connectivity is there. We got a response from the backend. Um, now we uh, basically uh, about to add a host, right? This was our first example. So um, if we were to add a host, we're just going to edit um, the HP route and we're going to go to the host name list and we're going to add www.bar.com. Um, and next I'm going to uh, see where I'll um, to the uh, www.bar.com. But first, just like look at the host name for, for a bit to see that we have what we expect. So we can see foo and bar.com. Um, and now I'm going to change the bar.com. And as we can see, uh, we just got a, uh, an answer for bar.com. And similarly, from foo2.com, which is a host we didn't add, we get a 404, uh, which is expected. OK. Now, um, um, if you want to experiment with new implementation, right? For this, we have, uh, I want to show you the Gateway um, API website uh, very briefly, uh, which basically details a lot in, of information about implementation. So if I go to the uh, comparison page, specifically on the version, um, I can see a lot of information about conformance status, conformance profiles, and uh, what implementation conforms with what. And this is very, very briefly. Uh, Matthias is going to talk a lot about it in detail in a minute. and. Um, here, let's say we just picked an implementation that uh, we think is good for us. In this case, we just picked on Envoy Gateway. We have a very easy link to the Envoy Gateway website um, and how we can uh, get started with it. And um, here, I'm going to just copy paste the Helm install command uh, to install Envoy Gateway to the cluster. And as you can see, um, uh, we're installing the v1.1.0 version which is uh, an Envoy Gateway case uh, aligned with the Gateway, um, Gateway basically, uh, Gateway API version. And after we install it, we're just going to wait until uh, the condition uh, is uh, met. So yeah, Envoy Gateway is ready. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to basically um, add the parent reference of uh, Envoy Get on. Oh, one second before that, um, before we adding, um, anything to their route, we need to verify what are the gateways and the gateway class that installed. And as we said, uh, previously we had uh, Istio external gateway and Istio gateway class installed, but we need to install the same infrastructure for an Envoy gateway. So basically, um, we're gonna basically see, uh, okay, we already have Istio, so now we're gonna apply the Envoy gateway uh, class and gateway to the cluster, and we're gonna wait until the gateway um, is going to be uh, ready. So here uh, we wait until the gateway is ready. And once it's ready and is programmed, we have a different IP for the Envoy external gateway. And um, that's basically where uh, we are going to um, apply the uh, parent refs. Um, so I'm going to add the Envoy external gateway as another parent ref to the HTTP route we already have. And then uh, we're going to try and test to see uh, that it works. So as you can see, we have two parent references. I'm going to go ahead, grab the Envoy Gateway IP from the Gateway status. Uh, just going to echo it real quick. And this is the same as the Gateway. Um, and then uh, I'm going to issue a request to the Envoy Gateway host. So you can see I issue a request to www.foo.com. And the request is uh, successfully uh, answered. Similarly, if I were to issue to foo.foo2.com, I can see I got 404 because there is no foo2.com host. All right, so um, right now uh, we have uh, traffic comes through both of the gateways. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the Istio external gateway uh, to see that the connectivity is still maintained only with Envoy. So I'm going to uh, just send a request to the Istio one to see that it doesn't work. This is foo.2, so not relevant, but here is foo.com. Uh, we can see the Istio one doesn't work, but if we were to change it to the Envoy gateway uh, host, uh, you can see everything still works as expected. Awesome. So um, now I'm going to uh, hand over everything to Mattia. 
um, to basically uh, talk about upgrading the Gateway API and what it takes to do so. Yeah, thank you, Leo. Let's share uh, the slides again. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> so basically, uh, we, we we just took a look at how Gateway API works, the portability, the uh, a richer feature set, and everything. So the question is, for the, it's pretty, pretty straightforward at this moment. And this is, well, of course, but should I should I really much? Should, of course, we are to Gateway API. But as for everything in life, the migration has some pros and some cons. So let's start with the pros. As Leo already said, Gateway API is GA, generally available and a new version v 2 is going to be released very soon. The feature set is way larger. The community is active and large. We have all over 20, 220 contributors, and there are over 25 implementations, which is a huge number, a huge number, because this means that the API is very widely adopted. But of course, we have a couple of calls. The first one is that not all the implementation specific features or annotation are supported by the Gateway API yet, because as Leo said at the beginning, the lack of specific and native features for the ingress led to a hell of custom annotations, extensions, CRDs. And so we are looking for a standard way of representing all these features. And in the Gateway API, we have many of these features standard implemented in a standard way, but not all of them yet. So it's just a matter of time probably. And the second point is that the migration can be really painful. But this is this is basically what we, we want to talk about today. How to make this, this migration a little bit easier. And for it, we have the Ingress to Gateway tool. Then before diving into the um, before diving into the um, Gateway API documentation and the repository, let's take a look at the supportability concept of the Gateway API. Basically, the Gateway API community created a set of conformance tests and uh, features. So basically, behind every single API field of the uh, Gateway API resources, such as the HTTP route or Gateway, there is a specific feature behind it. And these features are tested by specific conformance tests. Features can, be, can belong to three different uh, support levels, core, extended, or implementation specific. Then we have another abstraction, which is the concept of profiles. And profiles are collectors of features. So we have the profile for Gateway HTTP, which contains all the Gateway HTTP features, which are for north-south traffic with HTTP traffic. Um, the same for GRPC and TLS. And then we have the profiles related to the mesh traffic, which is the east-west. And because Gateway API provides support for east-west traffic with the Kamma project as well. So we have HTTP traffic for mesh and GRPC traffic for mesh. Now we have the concept of uh, the supportability of the Gateway API, and our goal is to go this is, is to go through this list of items and start with choosing the best implementation for us. And once we will get through all these uh, items, we will have our migration finalized, and we can shift our traffic and delete all the uh, the ingress configuration. So let's uh, deep dive a little bit on the um, documentation. Let me share again my screen here. Okay. I really hope you can see the Gateway API documentation. And here is the page that Leo already showcased very briefly previously. So here is the, an introduction, a set of concepts that if you are curious about the Gateway API, 
you should familiarize with this uh, website because it contains a lot of useful information for configuring, uh, for creating your Gateway API configuration, right? But let's go to the implementation page. Here is the page that contains all the projects that have submitted their conformance report uh, for the Gateway API. So we have over 25 implementations, as I said before, with different levels of support. We have alpha implementations, beta, even tech preview, and many different implementations, which are GA, such as Contour, is Ingress, Glue Gateway, uh, GKE, Istio Kong, and so on and so forth. If you go to, I don't know, for example, to the Cilium uh, here page, you can go to the to the Cilium website. I mean, you can explore as you as you want. But here is uh, the list of all the implementations uh, uh, that exist today. So let's say I, I am a user who wants to uh, understand which is the best Gateway API, Gateway API implementation for me, for my needs, and this is the starting point. So you can go through the list, you can explore all of the uh, implementations and start picking uh, some of them as maybe uh, target implementations. Then if we go to the uh, comparison page, uh, specific for the version 1.1 of the Gateway API, we can see the concept of features that I described previously. Because on the uh, in the column we in the columns we have all the features listed: get report 8080, route host very bright, request mirror, and so on and so forth. Uh, while on the rows we have all the projects. We have a bunch of reports for GKE, Kong, Cilium, and so on. Everything is grouped by profile. So we are looking into the uh, gateway HTTP profile at this moment. Below we have G G the gRPC route profile, TLS route, and then we have the profile for mesh traffic. <clears throat> and let's say that you uh, are a user who needs specific features for your configuration, for your needs, and then you can explore this table, you can understand which is the implementation that fits your needs, and you can start picking it up. Um, it's, it's very important to notice that this table is not uh, statically generated, but this is completely dynamically generated, starting from the conformance reports that are created and uploaded by the implementations themselves. Because as I mentioned before, the Gateway API community provide, provided the uh, users with the conformance test suite. And this suite uh, is basically a collection of tests that can be run against a specific implementation. And the output of this run is the conformance report. This report is uploaded by the project, by the implementation um, into the Gateway API repository. Indeed, if we go to the uh, conformance and the reports page uh, for version 1.1.0, we can see all the projects that submitted their conformance reports for this specific Gateway API version. And if we go, for example, Kong Kubernetes Ingress Controller, you can see that we have all the controller has only one report for Gateway API version 1.1. And then we have a readme, which contains a very useful set of information. Uh, first of all, we have the uh, table of contents. We have a matrix with all the reports listed here and some details. And then we have the reproduce section. The reproduce section is very important because it gives user a tool to double check that the uh, claimed reports are legitimate, basically, because the reports are uploaded by the um, projects themselves, and I, as a user, can double check that by following all the steps listed here, that the reports uh, actually, mm, that the, the, the project actually uh, supports the features that it claims to support. So if we get back to the, uh, to the presentation, we basically went through the first two items because we saw that 
because we saw that we check our ingress implementation supports gateway API. We picked a specific gateway API implementation according to our needs. We are sure that implementation is conformant with the features that I actually require. And we are basically ready to start writing all the gateway API configurations. And here it comes ingress to gateway, which is your body to kick off the migration process. And uh, ingress to gateway is a CLI tool that can be used to uh, read all the ingress and the implementation specific configurations, either from file or from a living cluster. And it can output the corresponding gateway API resources. And it's also very extensible. So far, we have uh, a bunch of providers implemented uh, because it's provider based. So basically, uh, every project can chime in in the uh, Ingress to Gateway repository and implement their provider. So, so far, we have Istio, Nginx, Kong, API 6, uh, Google Cloud, and Open API 3, which is uh, kind of a particular uh, case. But yeah, uh, I guess that we can start uh, performing the migration and I will hand over to uh, Leo. Thank you, Mattia. Um, yeah, let me let me pull the demo again. Um, right, so we're gonna demo the Ingress to Gateway migration, uh, how we drafting um, uh, Gateway API configurations and just real quick overview. Um, our environment is we have kind cluster installed. We have metal be installed just to provide an uh, ability to uh, uh, have IP addresses on the local cross on publicly accessible IP addresses on the local cluster. Uh, then we're going to have a uh, Kong ingress controller installed and specifically highlight the ingress part because um, we're going to, as uh, in the demo, we're going to install the uh, Kong gateway controller. Similarly, as Mattia indicated, the first step is just to pick and install the controller. So let's go ahead and start by installing the Kong Gateway controller. Um, and yeah, we, we're installing the controller, a bunch of uh, resources. Then we're going to wait until it's ready. And yeah, once it's ready, uh, we're going to go ahead and deploy the base manifests. And uh, here we have a service uh, that exports TCP echo service on 1025. And similarly, we have an HTTP service that exports a time deployment uh, on port 80. And uh, these these two uh, 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 manifests, uh, these two services we're gonna we're gonna use throughout the whole demo. Uh, so make sure you remember them. And I'm gonna follow up and just apply them to the cluster. So here we apply the uh, HP service, and similarly we apply the TCP echo one. And we're gonna also go ahead and uh, apply an ingress. Um, and this ingress is gonna export the time service. Um, um, from outside on port 80 on slash now. Um, so let's just grab this ingress IP real quick and test that the connectivity works. So we, we just want to demo uh, a real environment. Um, so yeah, here's the ingress IP. I got it from the status. And um, now I'm going to see where and I can see that the time deployment just simply uh, uh, respond with the time, uh, uh, current time. OK, next is I'm going to run the ingress to gateway. Uh, tool and deploy the output to the cluster. So I'm going to use the ingress to gateway print command. I'm going to list the provider's Kong. That means I'm interested in Kong specific configuration, um, whether it's ingress annotations or whether it's uh, Kong specific resources, which, which Mattia is going to demo in a bit. Um, and then I'm going to save it to gateway API.yaml, which we're going to look together and apply it to the cluster. So here's the command um, ingress to gateway print uh, dash A, all namespaces. Um, and now we're going to see what we have in the gateway API.yaml. So as you can see, uh, we have a gateway, um, and the gateway has a simple listener on port 80. Uh, it's a part of the gateway class uh, named Kong, which was probably installed as part of the Kong controller installation. And uh, then uh, we have an HTTP route that exports the time service on port 80 on path traffic slash now. And obviously, the route is attached to the Kong gateway that is deployed as part of it. Uh, now let's just similarly to Ingress test that everything works. So I'm grabbing the gateway IP from the get, from the uh, status uh, addresses field, and I'm going to see URL to slash now to see uh, that everything's working as expected. Uh, so here's the gateway IP. Uh, we can see uh, it's a different IP than before. 
Uh, then we're gonna uh, just see URL to get right now and we can see the current time. Um, right, now uh, we're gonna go up and uh, delete the ingress uh, to see that the connectivity still uh, works. And I just deleted the ingress. Uh, if I see URL to the ingress, we see we have no matched rules, no match routes. Uh, but if I uh, see URL to the gateway API, everything still, to get API, gateway API IP, sorry, uh, we can see that everything still works. Um, and yeah, over to Mattia. Yeah, thank you, Leo. And as the second step, we are going to showcase how to migrate the provider-specific uh, uh, CRDs uh, to the corresponding set of resources in the Gateway API realm. And to do so, we are going to use the um, TCP ingress, which is the TCP version of the ingress resource, because as Leo said at the beginning, uh, um, the ingress the ingress API lacked the protocol section. So basically only HTTP was allowed for, well, only HTTP traffic was allowed for ingress. And to uh, solve this problem, Kong created a, an L4 version, a TCP version of the ingress. And here is the TCP ingress. So we are going to see how to convert this TCP ingress resource, which is owned by Kong into the proper set of Get API resources. And let's uh, take a look at a couple of demo parts. So uh, starting from the uh, environment that Leo uh, used and created, let's perform some cleanup. So uh, as a first step, we have to delete the gateway, the HTTP route, and then we can uh, showcase this TCP ingress resource. <clears throat> Basically, this is the resource that we are going to create. It's very similar to the reg to a regular ingress. So we have a set of rules, uh, service name, name the TCP echo, which is just a uh, TCP server um, that, that lists and support 1025, and the mapping is performed on port 9000 9, of the gateway. So uh, we just created the TCP ingress resource here. This TCP ingress resource has been taken by the uh, ingress controller, and we are expected to see that it is properly working and that the traffic is properly routed. So if we grab the TCP ingress IP from the TCP ingress resource status, we can print it out. And if you curl it with the telnet because it's uh, an L4 uh, service, uh, we can see that the service is replying with the, the pod name, which is totally fine. So we want to uh, create the corresponding set of Gateway API resources out of this TCP ingress resource. So we run the ingress to Gateway tool with the uh, print command uh, by using a pro Kong as a provider, and we will apply the resulting manifest in the cluster. So let's run this uh, ingress to gateway uh, command. We are going to have this gateway API manifest uh, that we will showcase. And as you can see, the conversion of a TCP ingress resulted in a combination of gateway plus TCP route. TCP route is an alpha resource, is an experimental resource of gateway API. It's not GA yet, but it's available for um, the ones who want to experiment with L4 traffic. Uh, so if we apply this manifest, we can see that in our cluster, we have a new gateway and a new TCP route. And we should be able to see that uh, our newly created gateway is properly working. So if we grab the gateway IP from the gateway status, let's print it out just for double checking. Uh, it's different from the TCP ingress IP. And if we curl uh, again with Telnet uh, the gateway IP on port 9000, we can see that the pod is replying again uh, successfully. So basically, the pod is uh, reachable through different through two different resources: the CCP ingress and the gateway. So as a as a last step, we want to delete the TCP ingress because we want to finalize the migration. Uh, we can curl again at the TCP ingress IP and it's not working uh, It's not working anymore as expected, but the gateway is working because the gateway is there, the TCP route is there, and the traffic is routed as expected. And if we get back to, the, to our... Um, 
if we get back to our presentation, then the configurations have been created. The configurations have been applied. We tested that they properly work. And now the last step is just to shift your traffic if you are using, for example, uh, uh, tools like external DNS and the configurations, the old ingress configuration has already been deleted. And now I'll hand over to Devanesh uh, for his part of the demo. So thank you, Mattia. And uh, let me just bring up my slides. Uh, there we go. So as part of my Google Summer of Code project, I work to create a notification mechanism for English Gateway. And so this is a mechanism that can notify users about conversion results, warnings, and all sorts of crucial messages regarding the conversion. So as we uh, onboard more and more implementations to our tool and add more logic, uh, the logs are not sufficient to inform us about uh, important events. So, uh, and in order to improve the usability of the tool, uh, the user should know what is the uh, old resource to the new resource mapping, as well as uh, what the tool could not convert. So uh, this is important as it uh, gives users an idea on what all changes they need to make before uh, they can apply their new resources to the cluster. So I would like to highlight what the notification mechanism is and what it does not provide. So what it is, uh, it uh, provides you with the input resource to output resource mapping. And in some situations, it's possible that multiple input resources will combine to form a single output resource. And the notification mechanism will support that as well. Then uh, we have notifications regarding provider specific messages. So these are messages such as the feature passes, then annotation passing, and other provider specific uh, CRD conversions. Then we also have uh, features which are supported by Gateway API, but uh, or features which are not supported by Gateway API, but uh, sorry, no mind. Uh, features which are not supported by Gateway API or features which are supported by Gateway API, but not by Ingress to Gateway. And finally, the most important, we have uh, the Kubernetes resource, which is dispatching the particular notification. So this is uh, really useful, especially when it comes to debugging. Coming to what it does not provide us, so it is not a general logging of events. So uh, we want to uh, provide the users with uh, information that is that can help them uh, make important decisions regarding their uh, resources. And we don't want to talk a lot about uh, messages that uh, are inherently obvious, right? So for example, I might not want to tell the user about that uh, the default backend field of ingress has been mapped to the backend ref field of HTTP route. However, I do want to tell them about uh, the, that, the, that what all ingresses together make up a gateway. So now I can, now we can come to the demo. So let us now demonstrate how the notification mechanism works with ingress to gateway. So we'll be running a test on a kind cluster, uh, as you can see here. And uh, we'll be testing out two uh, providers, Istio and Nginx. I'll be creating three resources, Istio Gateway, Istio Virtual Service, and Nginx Ingress. And uh, all these resources have already been installed on the cluster. So let us first start with Istio. Uh, so this is the manifest file for uh, Istio Gateway. Yes, so as you can see, there are two servers here, one of which has a TLS field as well. And this is the manifest file for Virtual Service. So there are two HTTP route rules here, which correspond to the two servers specified in Istio Gateway. So now when I invoke my tool, yes, you will notice that there are two HTTP routes created along with one gateway and many notifications. So there can be different types of notifications based on the severity, such as a warning and informational. And uh, there's also a field for calling object, which basically specifies which particular resource is dispatching this notification. So you will notice that there are many notifications here, such as uh, ignoring field messages, uh, as well as successful conversion messages, which tell us what resource has been converted from the, uh, which what resource has been created from the uh, calling object. So now we can move on to Nginx. And this is the manifest file for uh, Nginx Ingress. And you'll notice that there are some provider specific annotations here, uh, canary annotations. 
and now if I invoke my tool by just changing the provider name, uh, yes, you'll notice that there's one HTTP route and one gateway created uh, along with some notifications. Again, these are successful conversions to HTTP route and gateway uh, along with uh, successful parsing of canary annotations. So another cool feature of notifications is that uh, let's say your cluster has many providers so, and you want to convert all of them. So uh, you can just simply append the name of all the providers in the tool itself, and uh, you'll get, get all the new resources as well as uh, the, no, their notifications. So as you'll notice here, uh, there's a separate table for Istio and another notifications table for Ingress engineers. So now I'll hand it over to Leo. Okay. Let's just conclude with the road ahead real quick. Um, so yeah, what's on our plate? Uh, we're planning uh, to con continue onboarding more implementations, uh, getting constant requests, um, and this um, tool is becoming uh, increasingly uh, common in the community. Um, we're planning to support different input and output provider. Uh, uh, this is a big change currently being reviewed. Um, uh, by uh, it is uh, contributed by David uh, from Google, and uh, this change will essentially let us uh, plug an input provider. And if this input provider does not implement um, gateway, like you know maybe it's just an ingress uh, implementation, uh, or maybe just a proprietary MPI implementation, we want to convert it to a gateway uh, conformant implementation. You could have different input and output provider, um, which is a very cool feature. And uh, lastly, we're planning to support Gateway API extensions. So some, uh, the Gateway API has an extent, uh, basically a defined process for how to extend the API and different implementation has uh, have different uh, extensions. So we are planning to also um, address that and provide basically a path forward for how uh, implementations um, can be converted. Like similarly, like how Ingress implementations or very specific annotations which uh, were in core and are not core in gateway, so how they can be uh, co uh, translated to gateway API extensions. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, if you want to get involved, if you're interested in being part of the gateway API community or uh, contributing to Ingress to gateway, uh, uh, there are plenty of opportunities. Uh, we have email friendly time meetings as well uh, as part of the gateway API. Um, so it's every other week, it's email friendly. Um, so I encourage you to just uh, go to the website, check uh, where the meetings are. You could also join the Slack channel um, and we have plenty of opportunities um, also for uh, new joiners. Yeah, that's, that's all uh, and I hope uh, it was useful and uh, feel free to reach us on Slack uh, um, for questions or find us in the Gateway API community slot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot.